Praise the Lord, everybody. I want to say thank you to everyone that is with us. Thank you to everyone that's made it out to this Friday night youth service. And can we all just stand in this place and let's go ahead, let's open up this service by lifting up our hands. And let's just go ahead and invite the presence of the Lord into this house. God, we love you. We worship you today. God, we're asking that you would move into this house, God. Let there be a move of your presence. Let your will be done today, oh God. Speak to our hearts, to our lives, God. We love you. We worship you, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We love you, God. We worship you today, God. Move into this place. Move into this house today, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. The word of the Lord says this. Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Can we just lift our hands and let's go ahead and let's God, let God have his way in this place tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we love you, God. We worship you, oh God. I will bless the Lord. I will praise his name. I will bless the Lord. I will praise his name for the rest of my life. I forever proclaim. He's good. He's good. I will bless the Lord. I will praise his name. I will praise his name. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will praise his name. I will praise his name. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. I forever proclaim. I forever proclaim. He's good. He's good. Oh, magnify. in this house today. Hallelujah, Jesus.
though that after service um, they will be selling pizza drink and a brownie for five dollars in the foyer and if you're wanting to help out this is actually to send two of our young people to a missions trip to Palau 
So if you would help and participate in that, it will help get them there. So we greatly appreciate that. And then just for our home church, we will be having our normal Sunday service. And Brother Robbins will be with us. So looking forward to that. Looking forward to a good time in the Lord and in the Holy Ghost in those services. And then just in the way of prayer requests, um, I know we have the Goshen Church with us. But it's something that we've been praying for, that God would just keep his hand upon them. They've been going through a lot in this time. So let's just continue to pray for them, ask God to help them. And then also the Canales family, they did lose Elder Canales. They had the viewing and everything for him today. So let's just remember that family. And then just everything going on in our world, let's just ask God to keep his hand upon us and just take control and just to be with us. Can we just right now where we're at, can we just lift our hands and we can we just ask God to move upon these prayer requests today? God, we thank you for today. God, we thank you for your presence that we feel in this place, God. We're asking, God, that you would be with our brothers and our sisters in Goshen, God. You see, God, what they've been going through, God. We're asking that you would strengthen them, God, in this time. Continue to be with them. Continue to strengthen and encourage them. In your mighty name we pray, oh God. Move in the Canalis family, God. Strengthen them, God. Help them in this time, God. Move in a mighty way, God. You see the needs. You see the prayer requests that are in this place, God. We're asking that you would take control, God. That you would have your way, oh God. Move in a mighty way, God. In your mighty name we pray. We thank you, Lord. We trust in you, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Continue to worship with us. We're going to sing one more song in this place before Brother Nate comes. So just continue to worship with us and set an atmosphere for the preaching of the word in this house tonight.
conversations and spent some good time with him. So brother Nate, come take your liberty and let God use you in this place tonight. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. So good to be in the house of God tonight. Amen. Those songs, I, 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 first time being blessed, first time I've heard that last song that you guys sang. There is deliverance in the name. There is healing in a name. There is salvation in his name. And, and, and it's, it's funny because I've been all week, well, for the last two weeks I've been, God, what, what, what is it that you want me to preach? What is it that you want me to talk about? And he said, I want you to preach that there's power still in the blood. But the blood. What you're going through, your situation, but the blood. That, that, that problem that just seems too big in that corner that's so dark that it seems like you can't come out of. But the blood. I want to give honor to, to Pastor Bodie for the opportunity to stand behind this desk tonight. Give honor to my pastor, Brother Stephen Barker, to be able to be, again, be in the house tonight. It was, it was, it's an honor to, to stand beside, I'm gonna call him more official than, than what I normally call him, you know. Brother Zuniga, I'm gonna refer him to Brother Zuniga, I just made him an elder in the church. But it's, it's an honor to stand next to him. And like you said, we, we worked together and we, we've, we had a great time and we experienced some crazy people all around us. 
But at the same time, we still believe that there was one God in the middle of turmoil. We still believe that he was going to save and he was going to deliver in the middle of everything. Amen. Tonight, I'm going to be reading out of Mark chapter 15, verses 19 through 25, a little lengthy reading. But again, it's such an honor to stand behind this desk tonight, this pulpit, and, and be able to deliver God's word to his people tonight. Mark 15, 19 says, And they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him. And bowing their knees, worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. And they compel one Simeon, a, a Syrian, who passed by coming out of the country and the father of Alexander and Rufus to bear his cross. And they bring him unto the place Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of the skull. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. And, then, and when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, what every man should take, and it was the third hour, and they crucified him. For the next little bit, I will be preaching on, but God. But God, he went and did everything that we just experienced. He went and died on that cross, shed his blood for you, for your sin, for the remission of your sin, for, for that, that, that issue that's in life that is too big, but God. God, we come before you tonight. God, that you would speak, God, to hearts, God, but that you would be able to, to, to work on my mind, God, and let me put myself behind in God, and everything that you want said, God, would be said tonight. God, we pray, God, for your spirit in this house, God, that you would break chains and shackles, God, and, and then loose anything that may hinder us tonight. In the name of Jesus, God, we, we know, God, you're going to do a work, God, in a life tonight. In Jesus' name, we give you the glory and the praise in advance in Jesus' name. You may be seated tonight. Now, wouldn't it be a different story if, if it wouldn't have ended that way, him being crucified? We would all be in a total different place if we would even be here at all. See, but there's more to this story. It didn't end with him just dying on a cross. We actually, in, in, in this story, we find there's a woman by the name of Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene stood off in the distance, just like some of us do. We stand in the distance and we watch and we look and we, and we think, man, I don't want to get too close, right? Because there's a lot of craziness over there and there's a lot of the world over there and I don't want to get too involved. She stood off in the distance watching as the crowd called this man on the cross. They, they, they called him the king of the Jews, but they did it mockingly. They weren't worshiping him, but they were making fun of a man being, held, being nailed to a cross saying, Where, where's your God? How come you can't bring yourself down off of this cross? You say you're something. You, you think you're something. Show us something. You must be the king of the Jews. As she looked on in disbelief, though, the priest and the crowd, they asked for Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. Crucify this king of the Jews. Give us this murderer, but take this savior. Give us the corrupt, but take the good. Barabbas, who had murdered and lied and cheated, free him. Free a man that should be nailed to a cross. Free a man that should be in prison. Free this man and the man that didn't do anything. Let's, let's, let's hang him to a cross. Let's, let's, let's take him down. We want Barabbas released. See, and, and, and the, issue, the issue here is there was a crowd that was in the distance that said, man, look it, that's our God. 
hey, hey, would you look, that, that is the king of the Jews. Just like us, we, we stand sometimes in disbelief saying, man, my problem's too big. I, I can't get too close. I don't want to go down to the altar because you know what? I know you broke through and, and you got your deliverance, but I don't know if it's big enough for me. I don't know if the altar, I don't know if God can meet me at the altar with my problem. I don't know if it's, I don't know if that same God that worked for you is the same God for me. Right? And we, and we, we come with disbelief into the house of God sometimes. We come with something on our mind that says, but, but, but God, I, I, don't, mm, I don't know. I don't know. I know you did it for my dad, and I know you did it for my mom, but can you do it for me? Ah, uh, you know what, God? I'm going to stand in the distance. I'm going to be a Mary Magdalene. I'm going to stand in the distance, and I'm going to watch as, as everything happens. I'm going to watch as they crucify you, and, I, and I'm going I'm to stand in, and watch. I wonder if you could put yourself tonight in her place for a bit. And if you could imagine, the sun was just coming up. There was a large, a very large crowd. The crowd yelling at the top of their lungs, crucify him, take him down, crucify him. And, and, and we want him gone. You can see Jesus, Pilate, the chief priest. And Barabbas, I want you to imagine those three. Then you see them beat Jesus. You watch as they place that crown of thorn on his head. You watch as they pierce him in the side. You watch as they whip him with, with the cat of nine tails. You watch as they beat him and spit upon him. It is now the third hour of the day, about 9 a.m., and he is crucified, and you're still watching. They put a, peer, a spear through his side. You watched as his flesh was ripped off his body. You watched as, as that whip kept hitting him, and as the blood poured out. Just like that old song says, Yet while he was on the cross, I, you were on his mind. While he was taking that beating and while that crown was being put on his head, you were on his mind. Yeah, you may have been in the distance and yeah, you may have disbelief, but I'm here to tell you that you were still on his mind. He's still saying, yeah, you know what? You may not understand what, what you're going through right now, but I'm still here. I'm still dying on this cross. My blood is for you tonight. His last words that he spoke were, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I'm pouring my blood out for someone that doesn't understand what they're even doing right now. I died for you that you would understand who I am, but, but I know it's going to take some time. But I, I'm still going to do it. You may never turn to me, but I'm still going to do it because I want to give you a chance. I want to. Oh, he's here to forgive somebody. He's here that he may mend somebody today. Everything, everything that you can possibly have going on in life, that blood is here to cover it tonight. Everything, everything. Mark 6, chapter, uh, chapter 16, 3 and 4 says, And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the, of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. Now, mind you, I've just taken you from the cross of him being crucified to three days later. We all know what happened three days later. We all know that because of those three days later, that now we have a God that is still alive. We have a God that, yes, he shed his blood and he died on the cross for you, but he's still alive today. And he's still here to save the lost today. He's still here. He's sitting on the throne Today, tonight, he is there on the throne waiting and longing for us to worship and receive him. See, things took a turn, a turn for the worst for the devil, but a turn for good for humanity. Because at that moment, we all, we all know the song, you know, what the, what the enemy thought uh, was, was bad, God's going to turn it for good, right? Well, right here at this point. Is one of those exact moments. The devil was having victory 
And he was just worshiping because I took him down. The king of kings, the king of the Jews, he's, he's no longer here. He's down in a grave. He's buried, and there's a huge stone in front of it that no man can move. If you will, he was behind bars. In our terms today, right, you can't get out of bars. You can't get out of, out of, out of that unless someone has a key to open a door. It just so happened that the one that was behind the bars had the key. He had, to key, he had the key to death, hell. Come on, somebody. He had, he had the key to your problem. He has the key to your situation. He has the key to depression. He has the key to suicide. He has the key to long suffering. He has it. He has the key to your problem today. So what, when that devil was, was rejoicing and all of a sudden, all of a sudden he heard a, a trembling, a, a shaking, if you will, and he's like, wait a minute, whoa, 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 hey, 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 guys, whoa, hey, hey. I know we're having the party, but was that the, was that the bass hitting? Was that the bass? Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Well, hmm. Nah, that wasn't, whoa, it's, 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 nah, that's off too, that's, that's off beat. That's not the bass. Wait, 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 guys, 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 whoa, hey, what's going on? Wait, there's a shaking going on. There's, a, there's something moving. There's something, that, mm, man, my, I'm getting a little, I'm getting chills down my back. Hmm, man, what is going on? There, mu there must be some people making some noise. There must be something going on because, ooh, it don't feel right. It don't feel right. Hey, 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 uh, hey, demons, why don't you guys go check out what's going on real quick? Can you go check on the people of God? Maybe they're worshiping too loud. Maybe, maybe there's something going on, and, 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 and all of a sudden it just starts shaking crazy. And before you know it, they get down to the tomb, and that tomb, that stone is rolled away. It's not a stone that you and I can move. It's not a stone that the, that the soldiers moved. But it was a stone that God moved out of the way and said, hey, I'm coming out. I'm coming out of my problem. And if I can come out, I'm here to bring you out with me. I'm here to bring you out of, of again, your situation tonight. You see, when, when they went to go see the place where Jesus lay, he was no longer there. And isn't it, wouldn't it be something? So I experienced on my 21st birthday, my grandpa passing away. Woke up that morning. It was a great day. Hey, 21st birthday. Man, we're going to have a great time. About 10 o'clock, we get a phone call. My mom gets a phone call. My, my grandpa is gone, passed away. Broke me. Tore me up. The blood left his body in the hospital. He, he, he had some issues, and, and he, he bled to death. And it was, it was, the reason I bring that up, I don't mean to be gruesome, but I want you to understand that when the blood left his body, that was it. That was it. The blood was gone. But, but the reason I even brought this story up is could, could you imagine if I went down to the cemetery right now and I get there and all of a sudden there's his, his, his tombstone is off to the side and grandpa's not in the grave anymore. I'm going to tell you one thing that, that um, I know he ain't Jesus. And I'm gonna have I'm gonna be a little nervous. Where's grandpa at? We all know that he wasn't a savior. We all know that he didn't die for my sins. We all know that he didn't do it, but there was a man that was in a tomb that the stone was rolled away. And I'm gonna tell you that that when the when the people seen it, they were just like, oh, hey, hey, hey. He came out. He's still alive. Yeah, they had questions, but they knew that he conquered the grave. He conquered it for you. He conquered it for you. He conquered it for me. He conquered it for, for the whole entire world. He conquered death for you. He's alive for you tonight. He's alive for me. He's alive for, for those that are lost, and he's trying to reach and save those tonight. You can look at this story because he took a beating and he was crucified. And you could take this story and be like, man, this is a sorry story, man. He's, I feel sorry for the guy. It was horrible. You, you, can, you can take all this and think, man, well, that was it. Sad story. 
We can all cry about it, right? And we all have cried about it. I've cried about it. I'm not going to say that this is not a sad story. But what I'm here to tell you tonight is this is not the end. This was not the end of our Savior's story. He didn't stop there. He didn't stop at just being crucified. But he came that you might have life more abundantly. He's alive and he's here to give you life. He's here to pick you up from being dead. He's here to pick you up out of, uh, you may think that, man, I'm, I'm just, I'm a piece of trash. I don't, don't, I don't belong. I'm not, I'm not nothing. I'm not, I'm not the next preacher. I'm not the next musician. I'm not the next singer. I'm just a saint of God on the pew. What more am I here for? And he's saying, no, 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 no. I have a plan for you. See, because my blood that is inside me is now inside of you. And you are a precious jewel. You are a, a, you're a, you're a, you're a saint of God. You are something. You may be the next soul winner of this church. You may be the next soul winner of your youth. You may, be, you may be the next usher and you may be the next greeter. You may be the next preacher. You may be the next, the next missionary. You may be the next evangelist. You don't know what God has for you until he puts it on you. Amen. How many are glad that God is alive tonight? How many are glad that he is in this church tonight? See, Jesus is sitting on his throne. He's not defeated, but he is alive. Song says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. He lives. He lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I'm here to tell someone my tomorrow is promised because of him. Doesn't mean I may make tomorrow, but in my, if my tomorrow comes, then I know that I have a chance because he lives. I may not make tomorrow, but if I make tomorrow, I have a chance because... There's a man sitting on a throne that has died for me, but he is still alive. See, it's that blood that he shed over 2,000 years ago that is still flowing today, still flowing tonight. It's that same blood that is saving you, saving me. And if you're not saved, it's here to save you. It's here to reach you. It's here to reach into you and, and be over you. See, because he didn't have to endure the cross. He didn't have to go through all this pain. Like we talked earlier, he could have called in thousands of millions of angels. He could have, at the, at, at the mention of anything out of his mouth, slaughtered the entire crowd. He could have done what he wanted with the place. He, in, in, in a sense, he could have moved furniture. He could have threw hands, whatever you want to call it. He could have done it. Why? He's got all the power known to mankind. He has all the power. He doesn't need you. He doesn't need me. But he did it for you. He did it for me. Amen. He's here to cover your failure. He's here to, he's here to cover your shortcoming. See, I don't know about you, but but my week's been pretty good, right? But, but today, man, I, I strolled and I dealt with some stuff. And I had, I had to go over this message for myself. And I had to say, God, your blood. God, I need it to cover me today. God, I'm dealing with some stuff in life. God, I need you to cover me. I need you to step in because, man, what I'm dealing with, God, only you can do it. Mom and dad can't help me. My wife can't help me. My kids can't help me. God, it's got to be you. God, I, I need you to break down barriers. God, I need you to break down walls in my life that I can go forward in you. God, I need your blood to, to wash me once more. And, and, and that, that is my prayer today is that he would wash each and every one that's in this house that needs and is longing to be that. To be washed, to be clean, to, to go forward. See, just when you feel that there is nothing left, you may feel like I'm done. 
He did it for somebody else, but now nah, he ain't going to do it for me. Man, I'm just, I'm nothing. Again, I'm a piece of trash. Man, I'm just, I long for more, but I'm nothing. He's that for you today. He's, he's that something. He's that person that says, well, you may think you're trash, but here, let me show you what you really are. Let me take you from this dumpster that you think you're in, and let me place you in a house of God where you belong. Let me put you in a house where, where there's a pastor that preaches one God. Let me put you in a house where there's a pastor that preaches that there is something better for you than what you think you know. Hey Amen. He's here to forgive you of all your sins. Again, you may think all that, right? Man, there's nothing that can do it for me. There's nothing. I've, I've done everything as a young person. I've done everything as a hyphen. I've done it all. I've tried it. I've experienced this. I've experienced that. Again, and I know I keep referring to a lot of songs. But I grew up on these songs, and I love these songs. And it reminds me that there's a God that washes away all my sins. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'm here to tell someone today, nothing but the blood of Jesus is going to change your situation. Nothing but the blood of Jesus is going to turn your life around. Nothing but the blood of Jesus is going to get you to heaven. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Tonight is someone's night for a fresh start. Tonight is someone's night to be washed by his blood all over again or maybe for the first time. Tonight is the night for you. It's still flowing just as strong today as it flowed from that cross. It's still flowing today as much as it did from mom and dad. It's still flowing today from what it did for grandma and grandpa and how it saved them and how it reached them. Today it's still the same for you. And it's here to conquer everything. It can conquer it all. It can conquer it all. It has power to conquer all sin. Not some sin. Not that little white lie. All sin. He came to forgive everything. He gave his life he gave his blood that he would forgive you. He would forgive you. He would forgive me. It still has that same power today to break loose sickness. It still has that same power today to break disease. It still has that same power today to break down stronghold and barriers. If you will, listen to these few scriptures real quick. First John 1 and 7, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us, cleanses us from all sin. Matthew 26 and 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Exodus 12 and 13 says, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt, Leviticus 17 and 11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for your soul. Exodus 12 and 13, we, we read it already. The blood shall be for you as, as a token upon the houses where ye are. We all know that we are the temple of God. When the blood is applied to the temple, he knows who he's dealing with. He knows, we, we, right here. And when I see the blood, when he sees the blood on you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. Now, if, if, if and I'm not here to alter the scripture. But if you'll substitute the plague for your situation, for your, for your problem, for, your, for, for, what, for what you feel is too big to conquer. Imagine that God says, mm -mm -mm, that blood that is on you, that, I, that I, died, I died and I shed my blood and now that blood that's upon you, mm -mm, get that, get that mode out of your eye. That, that's not too big. That's not to, that problem that you have is not too big. 
But I'm here that I that, 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 that the, 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 the sickness, that the disease, the, the, the longing for something else will not take hold and not, not pull you down. I'm here that you would have life, not death, and it will pass from you. What do all these scriptures talk about that I just read? What do they all have in common? They all talk about the power of the blood. They all talk about forgiveness and remission of sin. And without the blood on your life, there's no remission of sin. What can wash away my sins? Nothing. Nothing. There is nothing that can wash away your sins, young person. There's no, there's no party that you can go to. There's no, there's no club that you can go to. There's no drug you can experience. There's no alcohol that you can consume that will wash away the feeling but the blood. The blood can do it, but the blood. Oh, Brother Nate, I'm dealing with, man. You know, at home, mom and this and mom, that and dad, this and dad, that. And, you know, it's everyone else's fault, right? I, I Believe me, I've been a young person. I've been a young person, and it was everyone else's fault. And I remember dad always telling me, hey, Why'd you do it? Well, uh, my cousin, right? I always blame my cousin. Well, Ricardo, uh, Ricardo told me, he's like, so Ricardo's the boss. Oh, okay. All right. Well, hey, why don't you go live with Ricardo? Well, Ricardo's like the same age as me, so I mean, how is he going to take, well, that's my point. I'm dad. Listen to me. You want to go and you want to go out and party and you want to go out and do whatever, which I didn't ever, I went out and didn't go out and party. But my dad's philosophy was you want to go do what you want to do? There's the door. Feel free. Don't come home. Don't come home. Now I'm here to tell you that's not God's philosophy as in how he deals with situations. We all know about the son that left the, left the house, and, and when he came back, he got his birthright back, did he not? And I'm here to tell someone today, just like that, God's saying, mm, hey, 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 you may have strayed, you may have went away, but hey, whoa, I'm here to forgive you. My arms are still wide open. The house, the doors to the church, my house, they're wide open for you. Please come that you could have life all over again. If I can live, you can live. If, if mind you, he went through what we went through, saints, young people. He dealt with, yeah, he didn't have television at the time, and he didn't have smartphones, and he didn't have all that, obviously, right? Different times. But he was tempted like you and I. And I've had this talk with someone before, and, and they said, so you're comparing yourself and me to God? I said, whoa, wait. That's not the case. But we all know what Christian means, correct? I, and I told that person, I said, but you know what a Christian means, right? He looked at me and said, well, I mean, I got my, what I think it means. I said, no, I mean, go ahead and look it up. It means to be Christ-like. So if, if I'm here and I want to be Christ-like, I got to try to be perfect. I'm not going to be perfect. You're not going to be perfect. But the closest I can get to it for myself the best chance I have to make in it. The best chance I have to be obedient to my father, uh, of, 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 of my godly father, my pastor. The best chance I have to make in heaven is to be obedient to my pastor. The best chance I have is to be, oh, be obedient to this Bible. The best chance I have is to have that, but, that blood applied to my life that I can make heaven my home. My best chance is to have that power of the blood applied to my life. The blood of, of Jesus applied to your life says you are justified. It, it means you're forgiven. It means you're cleansed. It means you have the power to overcome the enemy. It means you no longer are a slave to sin. It means you are declared righteous. It means you're free. You no longer are condemned. And it also means you have total victory. You see, Mary Magdalene got to experience all that went on that day. She got to experience it all. She was there in the midst of the chaos, but 
But you and I get to see the backside of it. We weren't there for it, but we get to see the after effect. We get to read about it. We get to see and experience the saving power of the blood. It's because of the blood that I'm here today. It's because of the blood that your pastor is here today. It's because of the blood that you are here today. It's because of his blood. It's because of a cross. It's because of, 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 of a hill that he had to climb that you and I are here today. We get to witness miracles performed because of he died on a cross and he shed his blood for us. It's because of that that, that we get to repent it's of our sins at an altar. We get to have an experience with Jesus through the blood of Jesus. We get to experience him through his blood. It's not, it's not a coincidence that when he died, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It wasn't a coincidence. Because I don't feel, me personally, I don't feel that he was talking about just the people at that moment. Because let's be honest, folks. Some things that we do now, he's not on a cross, and we do worse than pierce him in the side. We do worse than putting a crown of thorns on his head sometimes. I'm talking about humanity. I'm not talking about just a saint of God. I'm talking about humanity. We do so worse sometimes. And he's saying, God, he's, he's, he's talking to himself, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They're putting me on a cross to die, and they don't even understand why they're putting me on a cross. They don't understand that, that I'm, I'm actually, I'm dying that they could have life, that they could experience who I am. They don't understand. Music, if you could come. See, there is a generation that is here tonight that still believes that there's power in the blood. There's a church that still believes that there's power in the blood. There's some saints of God that still believes that there is power in the blood. There's a generation that is holding on and saying, I believe what the Bible says. But there is also a generation that is seeking for something more than what the world has to offer. There is also a generation that is saying, what else is there? I've tried everything, and everything has failed. I've went to clinics. I've went to rehabs. I've tried this, and I've tried that. I've went here, and I've went there. Nothing's happened. I've been good for maybe three months. And then I fall off the wagon again. Pastor, youth pastor, Brother Nate, man, I don't know, I've, I've tried everything. I've tried everything. And everything has failed. Nothing can go right in my life. I feel like I take one step forward and two steps back. But God's saying, keep taking that one step towards me. You may take a step back here and there, and you may fall down, but when you fall, you make sure you get back up and keep coming. Because my blood is still pouring out today. That blood that, died, that, he, that he shed on Calvary is still pouring today, and he's saying, if you will make your way towards me, my blood is still willing to reach and cover you, to save you, and to pull you out. Tonight, that blood is flowing, and it's waiting to meet you. See, it can cover your hurt. It can cover your depression. It can cover your long suffering. It can cover your anxiety. It can cover your loneliness. It can cover all your sin. But more than all that, it can cover you tonight. It's God saying, I want to cover you with my blood. What you've been longing for is waiting for you. It's here. It's not at the clinic. It's not at home. It's not. It's right here at an altar waiting for you tonight. I wonder if we can all stand. Are you willing to give up on the world for a touch of his blood? Are you willing to taste of his goodness, the goodness of God? See, his blood will never lose its power. 
And yes, it reaches to the highest of mountains. And it flows to the lowest valleys. You can't outrun God's mercy and grace, people. Young person, hyphen, mom and dad, you can't outrun his grace. You can't go across the world. I've had friends that have done it. They joined the military and thought that when they were in Japan that they could get away from it. But a preacher reached out to him while he was there. He said, Michael, mm -mm. God's got something for you. I don't, know, I don't know nothing about you, but God's trying to reach you. You can't outrun God's grace and mercy. You can't outrun the blood. You can't. These altars are open for somebody today. Again, I don't know who I've talked to, and maybe this was all for myself. But that blood is here at an altar today. But God's saying again, will you make that step towards me? Your breakthrough is at this altar. Your deliverance is at this altar. What you're looking for is at this altar tonight. He's calling your name tonight. He's saying... You don't have to watch like Mary Magdalene did, but you can now be a part. You can now be a part. You can have a personal experience tonight at this altar. But will you make the first step? Will you be the one that says, hey, I'm going to give it all, God. I'm going to give up on everything that I've tried, and I'm giving you everything, God. God, wash me all over again with the blood. God, wash me all over again. Yeah, I may have had the Holy Ghost, and I may have the Holy Ghost. Right now, God, but God, cleanse me, God. I need a fresh start. God, you see what I've been dealing with, God, this year? This year's been horrible. God, this week's been horrible. Today's been horrible. God, let me, let me have a fresh start. God, I know I may have turned my back at some point in life. God, but I pray that you would sustain me. God, I pray that your blood would cover me once more. Once more, I, I, I plead and beg with somebody tonight to make your way to an altar that he would wash you all over again with his blood. Oh, Jesus. Go ahead and cry out to God in this place tonight. Whatever you're going through, God is here. God is here to speak to your situation tonight. Go ahead and lay your burdens on the altar tonight in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus, God. Do it right now, God. God, I pray, God, that you would apply your blood again to these young people's lives in this place, God. God, you see what they're going through, God. You see what they're dealing with, oh God. God, we're asking, God, that you would speak hope again, God. God, that you would speak life into their lives, oh God. God, let them know, God, that you're still willing to do a work through them, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus, God, speak right now, God. In the name of Jesus, God, let it flow, oh God. Oh, 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 oh,